Over the years, I've loved me a good 3D physics-based marble game. And in this comprehensive tutorial series, I want to show you how to make just that in Godot. So sit back, grab your favorite beverage, and enjoy. Thank you for watching. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to head over to the Godot Engine website, which is godotengine.org. And then we're going to want to head over to the download page. This is where we can download the Godot Engine application. And I'm just going to use the newest version that they have, which is 4.1.3 for me. Um, as long as you're using Godot Engine 4, you should be okay with this tutorial. But in order to download it, what you want to do is just click and it should start downloading a zip folder for you. I already downloaded it, so I'm going to open it up. And inside this zip folder, there's two applications. And what I like to do with these is I like to make a Godot 4 folder on my desktop and just take those two applications and drag them into those folder to use. And once you've done that, you can open the stable win 64 application. Uh, the console version is more used for debugging purposes if you need to use it for that. So let's open it up. And what you're going to be noticing is a uh, list of all the projects that you've worked on. Uh, if you have worked on projects, if you're a beginner, you might not see too many. Um, but what we want to do is we want to create a new project. And so the first thing that we want to do is select a project path. And what I like to do for that is on my desktop, I have a Godot projects folder that has all my Godot projects in it, which is pretty handy. So I'm just going to browse for that. Look for my desktop, Godot projects, and select that main folder. But it says the, the selected path is not empty. So what we can do is we can just create a folder in there and we can name it Marble 3D for our 3D marble game and just do create folder and that should go away now. And so now we can go ahead and click on create and edit and we can start working on our project. All right, so here is the Godot engine. And before we get started with our actual project, I just would like to do a general overview of the interface itself. So we're going to start with the top left up here, which is the toolbar. And this lets us mess around with our scene, uh, which we'll talk about later. Mess around with our entire project and its settings. And this is where we're going to uh, export our project and build it. Uh, we can mess around with some debug settings. Uh, we can mess around with editor settings and things of that nature. And finally, we can do some help things like look for help in the engine or do online uh, help, things like that. We can even look at the community help. Um, and so right under that is the uh, scene explorer. Or if you've ever used Blender or something like that, this is similar to the outliner. And it lets us see the general... Uh, things in our scene, things like our player, uh, our environment, stuff of that nature. And right under it is the file system. And what this is, is this holds folders of our entire game. And to get a general, better general understanding of it, uh, if we right click on this RES folder and do open in file manager, uh, it'll actually open the folder itself. So this essentially contains all the folders and all of our game assets. And so right next to that is the viewport of the of our game itself. And this is the 3D viewport, but there's also a, a 2D viewport if you were working on a 2D game or say an interface. Um, and there's also the scripting viewport, which we don't have any scripts yet, obviously, so this is uh, empty and finally is the uh, asset library which this just contains 
uh, a bunch of uh, assets, plugins, uh, a bunch of stuff made by the community that you can import into your own project, which is pretty cool. And so right next to that is our inspector. And this is going to let us see uh, the details of our objects. Like say you were making a character. Uh, this is where you could mess around with their speed or their size or something like that. We'll check it out later on. Um, and here's the node page, which we'll talk about this later on. Uh, Godot uses a lot of groups and signals and stuff like that, uh, which we'll talk about later on. And finally is our history, which is all of our undo history. Um, this is going to let us see all the changes we've recently made. Um, yeah. Next is up here, and this is going to be where we can play our game, which is right here with the play button, where we can pause our game, where we can stop and quit our game. Um, this one, don't really worry about this button. I don't think you're ever going to use that. Maybe. Uh, this is going to let us run our current scene, which we'll probably get into later. And this is going to let us run a specific scene, which uh, means that we could go into the file explorer and pick a specific scene that we'd like to run and finally this one lets us actually record a movie while we're playing and it's going to output a bunch of images that we can compile together to make a movie and finally this lets us choose our renderer which we're not really going to mess with in this project so that's a general overview of the interface and so now we're going to get started with our game okay so now that we're getting started with the actual project, the very first thing that we're going to want to do is head over to our inspector over here and click on 3D scene. And what this is going to do for us is essentially make a container to store all of the information for our very first level. So things like our player, our environment, our skybox, our sun, stuff like that. And what we can do is we can rename it to something like first level. And the way I renamed it is I just double clicked on it. And what I like to do is I like to uh, capitalize the first letter of words. And that will come in handy later on. And so now what we can do is we can save our level by pressing Control S. And this is going to give us a directory of where we want to save it. And what we can do is we can right click, create a new folder, and maybe just call it levels. And first level is a good name, or maybe level one. And I'll just rename it level one here for consistency purposes. And so now, uh, the very first thing I like to do when I make levels is I like to go over and click on these three dots right here. And I like to click add sun to scene and add environment to scene. And if you can see our, in our uh, inspector now, there is a world environment and a directional light. And our world of our environment is essentially our skybox. And our directional light is essentially our sun. And what I like to do with these is I like to select them both by pressing uh, shift and clicking on them. Uh, and then right clicking and doing reparent to new node and selecting node 3D. And just so you know what a node 3D is, is just something that can essentially contain positional, rotational, and scale information. So our first level essentially can hold positional, rotational, and scale information. So you could move your entire level around if you wanted to for some reason. Um, but now we're just going to rename this node 3D. And f this node 3D in particular is essentially an empty object. If you use Unity, it's just essentially there for organizational purposes. But what we can do is we can just rename this to environment. And so now we have a skybox and sun. And the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, add a floor for our player. So what we want to do is click on the plus button. And we'll add this directly to our environment. And we're going to look up a CSG box 3D. 
And what a CSG box is, is essentially a box, but this is a special box because it can use, we can just click on this checkbox and it can automatically create collisions for us. And so now what I can do with this box, as you can see, there's these arrows, these circles, and these squares. And so what the arrows do is they let you move the box. The squares let you also move the box in uh, two directions. Um, the circles, they let you rotate the box. And these uh, orange little circles here, they let you scale the box in certain directions. And what I could also do is if, as you can see on the top left here, I have the mouse pointer selected and this lets me do all these at the same time but if I press W it'll let me move as you can see if I press E it'll let me rotate and if I press R it'll let me scale and if I want to go back to the three I'm gonna press Q and it's gonna take me back to the mouse pointer so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna essentially make a floor for our character maybe something like this that's fine and we can just name it floor and so now we have a floor and so next thing that we want to do is we want to uh, start making our player and so what we want to do is we want to make sure we select our level one because whatever we select uh, when we add things they're gonna become children of that so if we were to add something now it would become a child of the environment whereas if we were to add things from here it become a child of level one you'll see in a second but what we're gonna look for is a rigid body 3d and it says a rigid body 3d is a 3d physics body that is moved by physics simulation which essentially is something that can be moved by physics which is exactly what we want for our marvel but First, we want to actually put this in a separate scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this plus right here to add a new scene. And we're going to create a new 3D scene. And what this essentially is going to be is going to be a uh, container for our player. So we can just call this player. And if you're wondering why we're making it into a no 3D instead of a rigid body, um, it's because uh, it's generally a good idea to turn your objects into components. And as you can see later on, we're going to have other components besides the rigid body that we're going to use. So what I like to do is essentially make a base for our player and then add things to that. But it kind of just depends on your project. So now we're going to add that rigid body to our base. So we're going to look for that rigid body. Click on it. Um, and if you can see here, it says this node has no shape, so it can't collide or interact with other objects. So we're going to want to add a collision to it. So if we look up collision shape 3D, we can do just that. But now it's going to say a shape must be provided. So if we go over to this inspector that I was talking about earlier, we can look at the details, head over to the shape, open it up, and we can look for the sphere, which is right here. And that's a good size. But as you can see, uh, we don't really have anything to see it with. All we see is this weird wireframe. So we're also going to want to add a mesh. So what we can do is we can click on the plus, look up for a mesh instance 3d go over to our details it's empty as you can see but we're just going to find a sphere and there you go now we have a, uh, a sphere that you can see and what i like to do is i like to take this icon right here this comes with every godot project and this can come uh and very handy for certain things uh it's generally just a good thing to use for uh, prototyping textures and stuff like that. So I'm going to head over to Surface Material Override. And I'm just going to drag that right over into that. 
And so now we're not quite ready to uh, start using our player, but we can save it. We can uh, go up a level back to our root right here. We can create a new folder. We'll call it objects because we'll have more objects later on. And we'll make a folder inside of that objects folder and call it player. And we can save that player scene right in there. And so now we have a player and a level. And in the next part, we'll add that player to the level and start working on our camera. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Give a like and subscribe if you liked it. And uh, to be continued.